Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Welcome back to another session of our series, Morning Reflections on the 99 Names of Allah. And so, inshallah, for today, our 17th session, we will be covering the names of Al Karim, Al Akram, and An Nur, names that have the meanings of limitless generosity as well as illumination and light. So, inshallah, to begin with generosity. Uh, the name Karim comes from the three letter root that has the meanings of uh, all kinds of good, that has the meanings of honor and virtue, dignity, and it was used by uh, the Arabs uh, in, in, in context to something that's beneficial, but also with a lasting benefit. Oftentimes we just translate it simply as generous, but uh, it has such a more expansive meaning, especially when we relate it back to Allah and when we relate it to uh, the usages in the Islamic tradition, uh, you see it used within the context of the Quran, the Quran al-Kareem, and shall we'll talk about that, but the adjective of Kareem, it's used to describe someone or something in this aspect that gives without being asked uh, and exceeds expectations beyond any measure. Uh, and the name Akram is derived from the exact same root of uh, Kaf, Ram, Mim, and uh, it has the uh, a root that is uh, comparative. And so it's it's uh, the word itself is compare is a comparative, um, which denotes even more uh, of an intense generosity and honor. So if you were to describe someone as generous or karim, you would use akram to say someone uh, else is more generous. And Allah is both karim and akram more generous uh, than the most generous uh, because of all the things that Allah possesses in the sense of Allah's perfection, Allah's oneness, Allah's uniqueness, uh, Allah's unassailable attributes that uh, not only is Allah the generous one, the, the, the one who uh, from whom generosity stems and the standard bearer for generous, but Allah is greater in a sense. Allah is even more generous than that. Uh, when we think of Allahu Akbar, that not only is Allah great, Allah is greater. So denoting a uh, active kind of a description to this quality. Um, and so as al karim and Al-Akram, Allah is therefore generous uh, in every single meaning of uh, the word, um, that uh, Allah is magnanimous when he gives without any measure, uh, Allah exceeds expectations, Allah forgives shortcomings uh, with, without um, any question, Allah honors uh, our generosity and righteousness and allows us to also uh, benefit not just from uh, our own uh, generosity, but the generosity of others and helps to foster this around. And so the expanded meanings, as I mentioned, that also uh, are seen when they are applied to other things, uh, but specifically with respect to the revelation or that which the Quran lifts up. Uh, but we see when the Quran uh, is lifted up as Kareem, the Quran is often called Al-Quran Al-Kareem, uh, a Quran that is has the, uh, the, the meanings of noble, dignified, uh, beneficial, honoring. Think about uh, that if we relate it as the adjective that we had said that it's used to describe someone who gives without being asked and exceeds expectations beyond any measure. Thinking of the Quran and as such that it gives us all these benefits without even being asked. Um, and it exceeds all expectations in the context of this revelation. So seeing the revelation as Kareem, not just as generous in what it gives, but in its continuous giving that, it, that we are receiving. And so uh, the humanity's generosity, when we think of it, uh, when we ever, whenever we look at these attributes, immediately what comes to mind is how we as humans conceptualize these attributes, whether it's justice, whether it's mercy, um, compassion, love, uh, all these other things, we have our finite understandings and generosity is no exception. Um, knowing that human generosity is something that has its natural constraints. We can only give so much before we start to take away from that which is essential to us. Even if we're the richest person in the world, we can give all that we can, give all that we can, but eventually we'll hit a point where we're starting to give from that which uh, we need to sustain us, um, depending on your level of wealth or whatever your resources. But at some point, as uh, the, the meaning is that humans have a natural um, kind of a limitation to their generosity. Um, they can do as much as they can, but then they, they will require some sacrifice to continue to operate at that same frequency uh, that they've been trying to. But what's interesting is that Allah is al Karim is one who does not have limits. Allah does not have a need for anything for sustenance. Allah is 
the self-sustaining as we've lifted up as Allah's Al-Qayyum, the one who is the sustainer, who sustains uh, everything, but also the one that does not need any sustenance and, and is free from uh, all of this. And so thinking about uh, that the generosity that Allah has does not nece necessitate or is, uh, you know, in any additional resource, nor is it uh, need any kind of replenishing, uh, nor does it depend on uh, anything for it to continue. It is something that is uh, given freely and is given without uh, kind of any uh, source to continue it to go because it's just a given uh, in a sense. And so when we see this uh, Kareem, when we see Al Kareem uh, and Allah's Al Kareem in our lives, uh, we want to take a look and hone in on the subtle blessings. Well, sometimes we think that Allah is only generous with us when we get those big things that, that come out, like it's maybe a big car or a huge promotion or something really big that happens that maybe changes our life course. And that's when Allah has been generous with us. Rather, we should see because Allah is not just our God in the, the, the brightest days, the sunny days, or you know, on those celebratory days, Allah is uh, our, our God, our Allah uh, in the uh, mundane days, in the days that are, you know, that, 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 that go by without much recognition. So looking in our lives, what are the subtle blessings that we have? Um, are there certain abilities that we have that uh, other people uh, are not um, given? Are, are there certain advantages that we have? Are there, you know, basic faculties that we have been given that uh, could easily not uh, you know, be given in that sense or have those taken away. So just counting those subtle blessings that we have. Again, we can't count the number of blessings that uh, Allah has given us, but just being mindful of some of those uh, in our lives uh, that are there. And then apart from that, uh, our, how we recognize Al-Karim in our life, thinking about the concept of prayer, thinking about the concept uh, of dua, um, that Allah has given us these mechanisms as a mean of pure connection. Um, there's a hadith that says uh, that uh, a believer is closest to their, their Lord or is closest to Allah uh, during their prostration. So, so this closeness that is fostered is done so through prayer. Uh, and Allah has provided us a way to do so in a way that does not cost anything, that, that does not require us to go and pay anything. You can pray any way you want. You can supplicate any way you want. Um, and it's a very personal connection, but it's one that has been given out of generosity because of the abundance of, uh, of goodness that comes, the, uh, the rewards that come for prayer in various forms and in, in, its, uh, in its reciprocity from you doing it, uh, the benefits that come to you seem to outweigh just your simple efforts that go there. And so uh, seeing that as a means of generosity. Uh, so additionally, we want to uh, give to people, even if they are not sincere. You know, when we think of Al-Karim uh, in, in, our, in our own lives, that Allah uh, gives to those who are not sincere at times, it gives to all people, you know, uh, regardless of what uh, their faith background might be or who they might be. We see some people in this world excelling in different ways. And we see, uh, you know, them being given things that other folks who may feel even more connected to Allah or have a belief in Allah, not receive in the same way. But we see this generosity is something that is not limited to people regardless of who they are. But at the end of the day, um, you know, uh, that we, we know that Allah is al-adl. Allah is the one who's the most just, but also Allah is the judge. Allah is the one who will, uh, you know, deal with folks in a sense of their, their recompense in fair measure. But with respect to the generosity, it's not one that is, that is limited or held back um, for any specific reason, it's, it's, it's lifted up to all. Um, and so uh, we want to also see the rewarding for goodness, that when we do good deeds, when we do things that are good, that Al-Karim is one that will reward us in our own lives. And it doesn't have to be the exact same way that we donated something that we're going to get this money back, but different doors open up when we do good things. Uh, being forgiving uh, in our life because we are being forgiven. Um, when we make mistakes and we own up to them, uh, and also just the aspect of paradise. We sometimes just think of paradise as a place that's there, um, you know, and, and you're just going to go visit it and it's going to be just, you know, bliss and that's it. But just thinking about uh, and, and, you know, ruminating on what paradise actually is and, and the generosity that Allah has that if you go through this life in an appropriate and proper manner with, uh, you know, full sincerity uh, and, and, and repentance in different ways to make up for your mistakes, that uh, whoever you are, you go through this this way in the way that Allah has prescribed, you'll be given an eternity, essentially, of bliss. And so just seeing that that generosity for a finite life, you are able to have the opportunity at an eternal 
uh, life. And so thinking about that. So how do we live with these names? We want to first and foremost recognize our own worth and our dignity. We want to honor ourselves because the one who is Karim made us Karim as well in this in this image. Uh, but uh, recognizing it's not just generosity, but Karim has the connotations of honor, of virtue, of dignity. Uh, and as humans, we naturally will lose these in different ways, but recognizing and honoring ourselves that we are uh, we are a dignified uh, creation, that we are an honorable creation, uh, and that it calls us to rise above those lowly desires we sometimes give into. So we want to honor ourselves. We don't want to dishonor uh, ourselves or dishonor Allah by doing those things that bring about harm or bring about uh, a lack of dignity or shame. Um, and, and, you know, one of the biggest ways to clean up anything that we do that is dishonorable is to ask sincere repentance and ask Allah for forgiveness. We want to recognize Allah's generosity in our life and in our dealings with us. And similarly, we want to be generous to those uh, who are around us. But at the end of the day, in recognizing this generosity, uh, the Quran has lifted up in Surah Hujurat that in Allah's eyes, the most honored of you are the ones who are most mindful of Allah. And Allah is all-knowing, all-aware, and especially for us fasting in this month in which Surah Al-Baqarah says that fasting has been prescribed for you, that you may attain uh, God consciousness, that you may be more mindful of Allah. Recognizing something you can take away from this month is that Allah honors us uh, the most, the most honored amongst us are those who are most mindful of Allah. So being at the end of the day, that that uh, anything that we do in our generosity and uh, looking in the blessings of our life, this all has that same root of being mindful of Allah. So these names should evoke not just the aspects of generosity or honor, but the aspect of mindfulness of Allah and what that brings to us uh, both in our lives and through us for other people and the world around us. Uh, the other name that we have is uh, An-Nur, uh, uh, and An-Nur is the light. Ibn al-Qayyim said that Allah has named himself the light, or An-Nur, that this religion is light, and he has made the abode of those who are close to him filled with light. And light is used to describe a multiple multitude of things, from sun uh, rays to uh, you know physical light in other forms, to uh, a spiritual light, to illumination. Uh, Al-Ghazali says that through Allah's light, uh, Allah makes everything more visible or clear, um, again, in the literal and in the spiritual sense. And so uh, as a nur, Allah is the light uh, and gives light, the so as is the source of light. And as such, it is only Allah who is truly uh, the one who illuminates. This light is one that not only brightens a room but or the darkness that's there, but brightens our minds, brightens our hearts, and drives out that darkness, whether spiritual or physical. And so uh, the literal light of Allah uh, is, is described uh, in the Islamic tradition as one that's too powerful to comprehend. Uh, it's otherworldly, but it has a spiritual dimension uh, as well as a guidance for us as well. And so uh, we see uh, in, in, in a hadith, the Prophet would, would make a, a dua that says that uh, I, I seek refuge in the light of your face, in the light of your face by which all darkness is dispelled, related in Tabarani. And uh, the darkness in our lives um, you know, from anything, regardless of what it is, internal, external, uh, we want to know and remember that Allah is uh, the light. Allah is the illuminator. Um, the Quran even lifts up Allah's attribute of light that uh, Allah is the light of the heavens and the earth. We sometimes just associate it that, oh, these, this light comes from the sun or from different stars or whatnot, but the light, uh, the source of light, all of this uh, is uh, from Allah, the, the light of nur samawati wal um, from all of creation and the light that gives light to everything. Uh, and that is light upon light, uh, nur ala nur. Uh, that it's just, it's it's an infinite source of light as with anything with Allah. But it's given uh, in the rich imagery of the image of a niche um, in the Quran and that a niche is a dent in a wall where lamps are placed um, in, in traditional spaces and they're made in, a, in curved shapes so that when the lamp is put there, the light would spread around the room. Um, and in order to make sure that the lamp doesn't extinguish, you add a covering of glass um, so that it doesn't blow out. And so that glass oftentimes also needs to be polished and shined, but this light needs an external fuel. And so it's whether from oil or from olive oil, whatever it may be, um, to keep it going. Uh, and the internal and the external lights meet at that point. And they, there's like this explosion of light that is that light upon light that is referred to. And, uh, the, the scholar Abu Al-Mansur relates that guidance in the heart of a believer 
uh, is an example of the light that Allah gives when commentating on this verse that we have all been created and given a spiritual light from Allah uh, within our breasts. And we uh, see the curved niches that Allah refers to in the Quran, similarly to the curved ribs uh, in our chests, which are inside us, that can spread this light all around, uh, but it is the heart that is the protective glass, that glass that uh, shades this light and holds it and keeps it going. And that light is already in us, that divine light is already in us, but oftentimes we can't uh, benefit from its, its illumination because the heart becomes, uh, becomes uh, darker, becomes in a sense of uh, fogged up and needs to be shined. And so this is a, it's a case for us to work on our heart in different ways, to shine our heart because you will let your light shine in different ways as well. But knowing that that divine light is embedded within you, within all of humanity, but we all have to do our work to allow it to shine. And so the light uh, that uh, is there from Allah is one that brings understanding, clarity, blessings, uh, guidance, and illumination. And in order to live with this name, we recognize that the light in our life, uh, wherever it might be, we want to sit with ourselves and see where is that divine light for us? Like, what, what, what how, how do we connect to that? Uh, we want to feed our spiritual light through the uh, fuel of prayer, through the fuel of connection with other people, through the doing of good. And we want to reflect Allah's light. We want to do uh, as Allah is the light of the heavens and the earth. We want to be the light for other people and in, in, in our lives and the world around us, as well as for ourselves to cultivate that divine light uh, and find our truer purpose. And at the end of the day, we want to pray. We want to pray for this light that it's, uh, it's, it's replenished through this aspect of connection uh, and a prayer that the Prophet would lift up um, with respect to uh, his, his light. He would lift up this beautiful prayer that said, um, Oh Allah, place light in my heart and my make and on my tongue light and in my ears light and in my sight light and above me light and below me light and to the right uh, light and to my left light uh, and before me put light and behind me light. Place my in my soul light, uh, magnify for me light, amplify for me light, make for me light and make me light. Oh Allah, grant me light and place light in my nerves and in my body light and in my blood light and in my hair light and in my skin light uh, and in the Quran it's lifted up. Uh, that our Lord perfect our light for us and forgive us, for you are truly most capable of everything. Rabbana atmim lana nurana wa fir lana innaka ala kulli shayin kateer. That we pray for this light and we continue to replenish the source, but we ask Allah to allow us to uh, live into this generosity, to be given from Allah's generosity uh, at an unending basis in order to be generous to those around us and that Allah remains the nur for us in our lives and for the rest of our lives and for all others and make us a source of light for uh, all others in our lives. Inshallah. Until next time, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.